morning everybody and welcome once again to our online service for Haywood Baptist Church. My name's Justin Kennedy, I'm the Minister in Training here at the church and I want to welcome you with us today as we seek to explore and understand the ways in which Jesus Christ encounters people in the Bible and therefore how he can encounter us too. This week we're in part three of our series of Encountering Jesus and we're going to look today at the story of a man called Philip and also how he is called to share the good news of Jesus Christ with an Ethiopian eunuch. I hope that you're blessed as you listen as we worship together, as we pray together, I pray that the Spirit of God will be with you. As always, I'd love to open up in prayer before we move on to Clive leading us in some worship songs. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, as we enter a period uh, of increased lockdown, Lord, where there is maybe fear and doubt in hearts. Lord, we pray today that through the presence of your Holy Spirit, that you will encourage and equip us at this time to be good news people. God, we pray that you would inspire us to begin to listen again to the voice of the Holy Spirit. To once again obey and share and see the kingdom of God grow in our communities, in our nation and in our world. God, as we begin this service, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, come to us, guard us and lead us. And may we finish this time together with a more certain and fuller knowledge of who we are called to be in this world. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to go over to Clive now, who's going to lead us in a couple of songs of worship. When I stumble in the race When my strength is gone on the road I'm on When I can't keep up the pace When I'm tempted from the pathway By the world and all its charms You hold me in your everlasting arms When I'm floundering in deep waters and the tide is rising high, when my world seems like a wilderness, when my way leads through the fire, when I cannot see the way ahead, darkness threatens, doubt alarms. Hold me in your everlasting arms You hold me in your everlasting arms You are a refuge to the weary A stronghold to the weak You are water to the thirsty you're the price to those who seek 
And to the troubled, broken hearted You're the God who heals and comes For you hold us in your everlasting arms You hold us in your everlasting arms you Lord this is where I want to be that I may live safe in your house in your holy sanctuary to gaze upon your beauty sheltered in life's raging storms resting in your everlasting arms resting in your Arms, safe within your everlasting arms. sight of the um, fear on my face. I'm told it's quite natural and uh, when you don't shave for three to four weeks, it appears. We come to together to pray for other people and situations. 
I'm going to pray four short prayers on a different subject. And each, after each one, I will pause and let you add your own prayers to those of mine. I will end each section with the words, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please join me with this if you'd like to. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for all your mercies and for the wonder of your creation and its many benefits to humankind. We give thanks also and pray for those involved in providing us with food. Farmers, food suppliers, butchers, supermarkets and their staff and all those who serve the community in this way. At this stressful time, give to them strength of body, patience and a cheerful spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring to you those nations and peoples where suffering and poverty are commonplace. We especially think of those suffering in war zones or surviving in refugee camps. Bring to them peace and the practical aid they need. Help us to do our part in prayer and giving to help them. We pray also for those frontline people seeking solutions to the needs of those folk. The United Nations pray that they might be guided to give effective help. For those agencies and charities bringing medical and other help, we pray that they'll be protected and empowered for them to continue. And for those Christian agencies, that they may be able to share also the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, today we pray for the nations struggling with the coronavirus pandemic. We bring before you the doctors and nurses and all those brought into contact with those who are suffering. We pray for those who are seeking a medical solution to the problem. Scientists and laboratory staff drug manufacturers, etc. Grant them success, we pray. Also, we ask that you would guide the leaders of the nations. Grant them wisdom and compassion in all their decisions for the benefits of their people. And in this time of trouble, may they seek your help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for ourselves and those near to us. Show us how we might, may reflect your light and love in this time of confusion, fear and yes, even anger. May we, your people, be a source of comfort and hope and if possible, practical help. And be those who know you will never leave them or forsake them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, based on an old prayer that you might recognise. O oh Jesus Christ, may we know thee more clearly love thee more dearly and follow thee more nearly day by day. Amen. Acts 8, 26-40 Philip and the Ethiopian Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of the treasury 
of the Kandake, which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I? he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come and up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. No, he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they travelled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptised? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water and Philip baptised him. When they came out up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared to Azotus mm. and travelled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. So the last two weeks, when we've looked at stories around encountering Jesus. They've been the kind of stories that have heavily featured appearances of the risen Jesus Christ. Now I have to say I've really enjoyed walking through those stories. Now today we have a slightly different story of encounter because this story focuses on two characters, Philip who is a believer in Jesus Christ, and an Ethiopian eunuch. And now we are in the part of the story of the early church where Jesus has gone to be with the Father and the Holy Spirit has been sent to God's people to empower them to continue the work that Jesus had started himself. This three particular words that have occurred to me when I read this passage of scripture and those words are sent, share and in my NRSV there's a word snatch, it's like taken. So we've got Philip who is sent, Philip shares and then Philip is snatched or taken. Let's start at the beginning of the passage which Donna read to us, we've got this man and his name is Philip. And Philip is known to be what Christians call, uh, call people that are good at sharing the good news. He's an evangelist. So he's the kind of man that is motivated by a desire to bring the good news of Jesus to others. But the story starts where Philip is spoken to or is directed in a unique sense by the Spirit of God. The story starts where Philip hears God tell him where to go. Philip is spoken to and he's sent. And Philip, of course, follows. He hears God's voice and he follows. And as he's journeying along and as he arrives where the Holy Spirit's told him to go, he's spoken to a second time to draw near 
to a chariot. And again, Philip follows. So Philip hears the Spirit, he follows the Spirit, and in all of that, Philip obeys God's leading. Philip is the sent one in this story. Now, the reason Philip is sent to draw alongside this chariot, which houses this Ethiopian eunuch, is because Philip is going to share the good news. You could almost say God has set this all up for Philip. Philip, the sent one, draws alongside a man who is a seeking one. And this seeking man is reading from a portion of the scriptures. And it was customary in, in those days. Reading wasn't a private thing. You would often read out loud. And this is, this is why Philip is able to hear what the Ethiopian eunuch is reading. And clearly the portion of scripture that the eunuch is reading appeals to Philip because it is one of the key sort of scriptures that the early Jewish believers in Jesus would have focused on as being fulfilled by Jesus himself. But here's just a little interesting detail about the Ethiopian eunuch. Because whilst you could be fooled by how he's described, looking after the treasury of a, of a queen and being in charge of many things, eunuchs probably had the lowest social status at that time. And this is usually because a eunuch is castrated. So a eunuch, a eunuch cannot have a family, cannot have the prestigious things that would confer honour. So Philip draws alongside someone of low status. Perhaps you might even say someone on the margins, even though he's doing a great job, he's still somebody on the margins. And this is who God sends Philip to. A seeking man desires truth. And so, the seeking man, the eunuch, asks a question of Philip. And I love, again, this idea we've talked over the last few weeks about journeys and about the fact that, you know, questioning is a huge part of journeying in faith. You won't really discover who God is without asking questions and the seeking man asks Philip a question and he says you know what I'm reading here from Isaiah is, is the prophet speaking about himself or somebody else and so Philip of course he sees the opportunity to interpret this scripture for this seeking man of the fact that Philip's joined him in the chariot and isn't that another great thing as well that that when God desires to reveal himself he sends people to sit next to other people and I've said this many many times about hospitality, friendship, about stepping into the world of another in order to communicate the grace that that other so desperately needs to hear. The seeking man asks the question and the obedient man answers. Now, we're not given a great amount of detail other than 
to say that as Philip's sharing, it becomes apparent that the Ethiopian eunuch has believed. Therefore, he desires to be baptised. And then there becomes no reason in Philip's heart why this man shouldn't be baptised, as he seems to have received Philip's interpretation of the word with, with great joy. At this point, the seeker becomes an obeyer like Philip. And he's baptised. But we get another funny incident again. And we saw this when we looked two weeks ago at the road to Emmaus. The Ethiopian eunuch is baptised. And Philip is snatched away. Or is taken away from this scene. God takes Philip. He leaves the seeker to become the new sent one. And isn't it great in this story how rejoicing is the scene now. And like before when we saw on the road to Emmaus story, when Jesus goes from those two followers, they say, didn't our hearts burn within us? And in this story, the Ethiopian eunuch is left in a state of rejoicing. The good news he has received causes him to rejoice. But again, haven't we got that example here? God on the move. He leaves behind the Ethiopian eunuch to now become the new sent one in the world whilst he takes Philip somewhere else because God's kingdom is always on the move. It's always growing. What an interesting story again. And I'd almost say in this, we're looking at encountering Jesus through scripture. Because that seems to be the key thing, doesn't it, in what we've had read to us. That here is a man reading scripture and a sent and obedient man comes to interpret that scripture to him. What does that mean for us? What does this whole story mean for us, us who claim to be followers of Jesus? Well, I think the first thing is just as Philip was a sent one, just as Philip was led by the Spirit, we are sent ones. We are sent into this world and we are sent with the power of the Holy Spirit. We're called to be good listeners. We're called to be sensitive to what God may be doing in the world and we are called then to follow and obey. A true Christian is always a sent Christian. We Go where God shows us. But what else have we got in this story? We've also got Philip had to be willing to draw alongside a man of low status. The Ethiopian eunuch was no prestigious, honourable individual, although the story might fool us into that, but he's not. So Philip has to get close enough to this man, even to draw up alongside him in the chariot and to journey and be with him. The true followers of Jesus do not care what class, social status, what prestige is in other people. We go because the good news needs to be shared. 
and we go across boundary lines. We go to the people and the places that others would not go to. And in this story too, Philip has to be willing to help this Ethiopian eunuch understand what the scripture is saying. And I think that's a challenge for us. We, we have to be a people that understand how scripture can be used to help others encounter Jesus Christ. Followers of Jesus have to, ought to, have a reason for the hope that is in them. And we have to be willing and open, just as Philip was, to share. We have to be humble enough too to go to the places that are not good in order to share. But then lastly, this story, what, what does it mean that Philip got snatched away and that the Ethiopian eunuch got left behind? And I wonder whether this is another example of the fact that God's kingdom is always on the move. And you know, often we could connect with somebody and we could share the good news with somebody. But we could get very precious about that friendship, that relationship. And we could get comfortable because perhaps it was nice for Philip. The unit may have praised him. The unit might have loved him. It might have been good for Philip to stick around. He could have done a lot more discipleship activity. And sometimes God takes us away from things so that those things, as good as they are, don't stop us from continuing our journey of discipleship. Sometimes, too, God might take us away because it is for the good of the one who has heard. You know, when you have a child, a child is dependent on you. But there has to come a time where there is a, a kind of sense of separating. A child has to grow, has to be left to, to work things out. And often I wonder sometimes whether we as Christians can become a little bit too precious about our territories and about the people that we may have shared a message with and we want them to depend on us. We want them to come to us all the time to get prayed for and we want to almost come across as we're the, we're the ambassadors of scripture and often God tears all of that and throws all of that around and he keeps everything fresh so that we don't get dependent too much on things and circumstances. God's kingdom is always on the move. But the one thing that happens in this story is that the good news, which is left with the Ethiopian eunuch, means that he now becomes the new sent one for his community. Do we, as the church empower people to be the new sent ones in our communities or do we just want the badge that we're the sent ones do we want all the plaudits or are we willing to be snatched away just as much as to be left are we willing to continue following let me just end with a challenge because this is what occurs to me. OK, we've got Philip interpreting scripture, drawn alongside a man. And this man, the Ethiopian eunuch, the seeker, becomes the obeyer, becomes the new sent one. But I want to challenge 
you as my friends watching today, if you are a follower of Jesus, you're a sent one. And if you're a sent one, then you, and I'll say me myself, we should be following. We should be obeying. We should be looking for where God's kingdom is being manifest in this world. And we should be running towards that to affirm that. We should always be on the move. We should be willing to share the good news. We should be looking ourselves to encounter Jesus through scripture that we might meet then people who are looking at scripture to help them too. And we mustn't be precious about ministry. We must always be willing to be moved by God. Knowing that those who are left, God is more than able to make them the new sent ones. Please at this time of lockdown, please at this time of lockdown, begin to listen and follow and form new ways of connecting with God so that once we come out of lockdown we will quickly recognize the God seekers around us and we would recognize how we draw alongside them how we give them good news so that we can, in God, produce more and more sent ones into this world. Amen. I'd like us to finish in reflection here. We're going to play a song which is Jesus Lead Us to the Father. By your spirit, help us draw near. And it might be just a nice way of reflecting on what we've shared together.
So thank you for sticking with us this morning on our journey of looking at encountering Christ through Scripture via the lens of the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Remember now, you are a sent one. You are called to share about the one who has saved you and sent you. And we are called to hold lightly to the things that God would do through us so that we are ready and available to continue following the way of the kingdom of God in this world. I really do hope and pray that this morning resonates with you and I'm praying it really lands and resonates with me too. That I would be a person with a spirit of generosity, willing to cross the road, to go to the other side, to pray for the other and to bring the good news of Jesus so that rejoicing might be had and so that we might produce more sent ones in our community. So let's say together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and evermore. Amen.